siphoning is the unwanted flow of water or any other kind of fluid even after you switch off the pump. It poses a real risk to your boat, for instance in the exhaust system. If seawater slowly finds its way into your exhaust system, it will fill up the water lock, fill up the hose towards the engine and then seawater can enter your engine where it will do extensive damage. The same applies to any place where water or any other fluid is used, such as a sink, the toilet, the shower and even your bilge pump system. At Vetis we want you to enjoy carefree boating, so we've designed a number of air vents to prevent the siphoning effect from happening. And in this video we'll do an demonstration of what the siphoning effect is and how an air vent can take that risk away. The siphoning effect is when water is still flowing even after you've switched off the pump. I've got a bucket here filled with water and an empty one here. In this bucket there's a bilge pump similar to this one. And of course if I switch on the pump, the pump will pump water through the hose into this bucket. But when I switch off the pump, water will continuously flow simply because gravity is pulling on the hose and it will pump water into the lower bucket. This is the main direction of flow. What can also happen is if you're pumping water out of your boat after you've switched off the pump, water can flow back towards the bilge pump. First we'll do a demonstration of the first one where water siphons in the normal direction and then one in the opposite direction. So if I switch on the pump, water is pumped through the hose into the lower bucket. I've switched off the pump and water is continuously flowing even if I put the hose higher than the water level it's still flowing into the bucket simply because gravity is pulling on the hose. Now to block this from happening if I introduce a little bit of air in the system the siphoning effect is broken. Siphoning can also happen in the other direction. There's now a little bit of water in this bucket. If I put this bucket higher than this one and I keep the hose submerged in the fluid, if I switch on the pump, water will be pumped to this level. But if I switch off the pump, gravity will pull on this hose and empty this bucket into this one. So I'm switching on the pump. Water is pushed into this bucket. If I switch off the pump, I can now see water being drawn back into this bucket and to stop that from happening I put a little bit of air in the system and the siphoning effect is broken. To block the siphoning effect from happening I've installed an air vent in the system. An air vent works on pressure differences, there's a small nozzle on top and that can allow air into the system. When I switch on the pump, water is forced up this hose, it creates an overpressure here, the valve closes itself, so water is forced down the hose into the bucket like normal. But when I switch off the pump, gravity is pulling on both sides of the hoses, and under pressure is created here, a duckbill valve opens and it allows air into the system and that will block the siphoning effect. So when I switch on the pump, water will flow like normal. But when I switch off the pump, air is introduced into the system and it blocks the siphoning effect from happening. There's a couple of different options for valves. This is my favorite one, the HSDV with the duckbill valve. There's an alternative, a legacy product, the air vent with a slightly bigger bulge on top with an internal valve. Another option is to use a drain hose on this nozzle. Make sure that the drain hose continuously runs downhill. Sometimes an air vent can leak a few drops of water, especially if the water pressure in here is pulsating, such as with a diaphragm pump. That can create pulses and the valve might open a bit, allowing a couple of drops of water out. You can install a hose, make sure it continuously runs downhill and that it, the hose ends in air, so any water that finds its way in the hose can drain out. As an alternative, if you run in very dirty water, you can completely remove the duckbill valve Put the cover back on. Now, once you've switched on the pump, water will find its way continuously out of that hose. But if you switch off the pump, air will enter the hose and block the siphoning effect from happening. It's a very fail-safe way of working, but the dig wheel valve works extremely reliable as well. When you install an air vent, there's a couple of guidelines that you have to adhere to. 
The main one is where to place the air vent. Always make sure that it's on the pressure side of a pump because the valve will close as soon as it feels positive pressure. If it's on the suction side of a pump, air will continuously be sucked in and it will ruin the efficiency of your pump. So make sure it's on the pressure side of a pump. Second step is the correct height. If it's too close to the water level, it might not open properly. Then again, you don't want to mount it ridiculously high because now the pump has to overcome this static height in order to pump water out of the system. In the air vent manual and in your engine manual, we give guidelines on where to correctly place the air vent. On sailboats, be aware that even if the ship is healing, the air vent should be above water level and typically in the center line of your boat is a good location for an air vent. If you decide to use the hose option, either with or without an installed valve, make sure the hose continuously runs downhill and that the end of the hose is in air. If it's submerged in water, it will block the valve from opening correctly. So make sure that it's continuously downhill and that it ends in air. The HSDV air vent requires very little maintenance. But once a year, maybe a bit more often if you run in sandy, silty waterways, it makes sense to inspect the duckbill valve. To do so, simply remove the cover. The valve is underneath, just pull it out, clean it under flowing water like the tap. Inspect the hole if it's completely free of the V. Check if the valve isn't worn or torn. Put it back in and put the cover back on. If the duckbill valve is worn or damaged, we supply a little kit. And the kit even includes a little wire brush so you can clean the inside of the air vent. The older style air vent, the legacy product, has a bulge on top. There's a mechanical valve with a spring on the inside. Once every six months, remove it, clean it in water, inspect it, and then put it back on. And again, if you're using the hose option, make sure that the hose is not sagging, but that it continuously runs downhill and that the end ends in air. Thanks for your time and attention. I hope this video on the Vetus air vent helps to keep your boat carefree and safe, giving you many hours of enjoyable time out on the waterways.